Well, we're going to call the January 16th meeting of the Situate Zoning Board of Appeals to order. Uh, before we get started, I would like to introduce our newest member, George, and can you pronounce your last name for the record? Sixus. Sixus. As a fellow last named person that is uh, <laughs> oft mispronounced, I wanted to give you that opportunity. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so we are going to jump quickly to item three on our agenda, the additional business, and start with that because our building inspector needs to run to another meeting. Is somebody here on um, number one? I am not sure if someone's here on number yeah. one. I don't know if you were, because I think there was a request. Oh, yeah, the Tearingbrook uh, Meadow. We're extending it. They requested a continuance. Oh, okay. So to that end, Bob, just quickly before we get to you, the Herringbrook Meadow application regarding the sign has continued again. They have asked for a continuance in order to gather some more information in response to some of the public questions and comments that were received at our last meeting. So that has been continued to our next meeting, which will be... <coughs> February 20th. Um, they have requested that continuance, and on that, do we have a motion? Uh, move to continue the uh, hearing on uh, Herringbrook Meadows' request for signage on Route 3A to our next regularly scheduled meeting uh, in February. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. With that, we will move to additional business. So, Bob, if you would please. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, board members. Um, <coughs> so, uh, you've seen material on this proposed amendment or uh, change to Section 830 of the Zoning Bylaws. And also a small change to Section 810, but Section 830 is the sort of meat of the situation. Um, the change that I'm proposing, and I'm not, I'm starting out to say that I would love um, and appreciate input from, from board members and, and others, uh, how this is to be achieved. But the problem is fairly defined. Uh, we have in town, uh, I want to say several, there are three that stand out, but I'll, I'll bet anything there are many more. Properties that have been basically abandoned by their owners for one reason or another. Uh, once that happens, the property deteriorates. Um, in one case, uh, it's, on a, it's on a coastal um, uh, beach and uh, uh, the way the uh, the ocean has entered the house multiple times and done its work, that kind of thing. Um, we have a lot of complaints, and the complaints come to my office from neighbors saying, you know, there's a house next to me, it's, uh, it's blighting the neighborhood, uh, it's dangerous, there are um, perhaps... Um, uh, activities going on there that that are not that are not within the law there's a potential for fires either set by vandals or accidental <coughs> there's certainly a potential for vermin to collect so if you've got one of these in your neighborhood you know it's very detrimental and uh, it doesn't happen everywhere you know in town but when it happens uh, it's extremely uh, as I say, det detrimental, and and people complain about it. They want they want something done about it. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. Right now, the way Section 830 is written, if I haven't pulled a building permit to repair that house, for instance, after a fire or after destruction by the ocean, within three years, and if I haven't completed the project within four years, although I can get an extension <coughs> on that completion, uh, then. I'm basically shut off. Uh, it's unclear if there are any residual rights to that property that I still have, but they're certainly not mentioned in the zoning bylaws. <coughs> so at that point of time, if the property remains abandoned, 
there's literally nothing anyone can do about it. If it's on a non-conforming lot, which the ones I'm thinking of are, um, even the lot itself has no value because once I've torn the structure down or a potential developer has torn the structure down, I can't rebuild. So I'd like to solve that problem. This may not be the way to do it, but I've given it my best shot. And uh, I can go over it with you uh, in as much detail as you like. If we, uh, if we think that's a you know, good, good use of time. Um, basically, as I said, the existing <coughs> 830 after that period of time shuts you off from further use of the non-conforming property. Uh, the first thing that occurred to me was that the problem children, so to speak, that we're dealing with, and really we do get complaints maybe a couple a month, maybe once a month, but a continuing stream. And also, interestingly, we've gotten inquiries, at least on one of these properties, from pot potential developers <coughs> and had to tell them, no, you can't really uh, consider this as a possible development site because of, because of the same memorandum. Uh, so I'd like to distinguish in this change between residential and non-residential properties. I'd like to clarify some of the language that's just housekeeping. And I'd like to make the time lapse between the damage or destruction and your ability to reclaim that <coughs> property and restore it bas basically open-ended, <coughs> excuse me, for residential properties only. Uh, for commercial properties or even more sort of definitively for properties that do not conform in their use to the district where they are, uh, I would not take that restriction away. I would then want to continue to incentivize the owners of those properties to make repairs and to restore the properties to good condition uh, in a uh, in a manner that that you know is is a time uh, has has a time limit to it, but for residential, there's it seems to me that there are <coughs> reasons that could be extended probate. There could be could be an extended divorce battle. Uh, there could be sickness or illness or whatever that. Uh, the three three uh, th three year time period just doesn't seem seem sufficient, and with it imposed, I think there are cases where people have simply walked away. You know, maybe they've cashed the insurance check and walked away, but at the the result is the same, and the result is these blighted properties that are very detrimental to the neighborhood. And I'd like for there to way there to be a way for those properties to retain their value, to retain their attractiveness to either the owners to re redevelop or to um, to other people to come in and buy them and and do something um, to restore them so that that was the intent uh, of this I tried to close some loopholes I uh, one one is that um, I don't want this retroactive I would like to see it apply to existing Dam damaged or deteriorated properties, but not go back and try and recapture properties that were damaged 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, whatever, um, because I think that that's a slippery slope. Uh, but I think going forward, it could be applied effectively to um, at least minimize, if not prevent, the kind of, the kind of blight that we, that we do see in various places across town. Uh, so that's, that's basically what's, what's proposed. And as I said, uh, I'm not an attorney. I'm someone who's kind of on the front line in terms of 
seeing and have to deal with having to deal with complaints concerning this problem and I'd love to be able to tell people who call yes you know there is a there is a way uh, it may not be happening to that building right next door to you but it could happen uh, in terms of being allowed by the zoning bylaws and maybe someday it will happen simple as that <coughs> thank you Bob I just had a quick question Bob <clears throat> you said that you wanted uh, you wanted not to be retroactive like 10 15 years ago does that mean so those houses that were destroyed 10 15 years ago that are completely wiped out or how I would that I yeah I would like to make it Tom something that would not recognize for instance a foundation half buried on the old town way or a stone right. or a stone foundation somewhere in the woods from 1780 but in the instance like you uh, said maybe the one that was close to the water say right. that was damaged 10 years ago but the structure still standing that would qualify I would like to that I would like this to apply to that structure but something where say that house had been knocked down and there was just a foundation there it wouldn't apply to something I'd, again it's it's a it's a it's a subtlety but yes that would be the intent if we is the foundation get structure? Right. I think so. Yeah, I mean that's. I think it would that's, be. That's a good question. Yes, the foundation. I would say is a structure. So, so not just existing as of the effective date, but you also want it to be prospective. So, if something happens tomorrow, you want it to apply to. I would definitely want right. it to apply okay. to, so to that. that. that Right. There were the language you get tweaked. Probably. But I do, I do well, think <laughs> typically with a bylaw, you wouldn't say that this applies to tomorrow. Once the bylaw is passed, yeah. it, yeah, it applies. No, agreed. But the way, because it's single or two family or accessory structure, they're two existing as of the effective date. So that implies that that's the structure has to exist as of the effective date. It, as you read, at, oh, as of is read as. It can exist in a, a damaged state. Yes, uh, yeah. beginning. Beginning of the effective There yeah. were a number of structures that were destroyed in the blizzard of 78. Right. Uh, one has been in front of this board and uh, the land court and the appeals court, I think, three <coughs> times. Um, uh, and the board is consistently uh, denied the request that, that parcel be developed in the appeals could the land court has upheld it in the appeals court has upheld the land court based Which, on a two-year you know, time lapse exactly and mm -hmm. um, and and then after the blizzard of 78 there was also the no-name storm and obviously we're we're prime for this to happen with greater frequency uh, going going forward um, Bob I um, think that you wield your authority uh, sparingly and judiciously my concern is for the next Bob um, because you are not immortal as far as I know and um, will will the the next zoning enforcement officer and building commissioner uh, be as judicious and that that's that's my concern rather than having a bright line rule having it be more nebulous that's my concern and so not disagreeing at all trying to understand what what would be the the negative there what, what's the concern how does that play out in a hypothetical somebody somebody comes in five years later and can can rebuild something or six years later, seven years later. Right. I think that, that, that we want to encourage people to rebuild as, as soon as possible so that we don't have these blighted homes in our oh, midst. I, I definitely agree with that, and that was the intent of the original bylaw. There's no question about it. But it, it does have so unintended consequences as and, well. But And those two consequences are at odds, right? Either, yeah. either we're going... Either we're going to stop people from waiting a certain amount of time, and if we do, that means if they wait more than a certain amount of time, then we're going to have properties that become unbuildable lots. Useless. Yeah. I, and if, if it, it's not going to have no value. There's Land is, in situate is always going to have value. It would have diminished value. 
it would probably only have value to the two butters if there's right. one That's person correct. on each side. Two or, or if there are more butters? Yeah, right. So up to three, I'd say. Right. I'm not sure. And keep in mind, this is a town bylaw. So if we do not enact this, if we do it, if, if we do not enact this and it stays in place, that blighted parcel that is not developed could be developed by seeking relief from this bylaw. Right. It could be developed under 40B. So you, your, your blighted parcel that's next door and say 8,000 square feet of land could be a two bedroom, or excuse me, a two unit 40B or a three unit 40B. Uh, you know, could, again, could, arguing, could, could arguing be, the other way. Could be the first one I'm right. aware of in the right. history of the Commonwealth. No, no, no. They're, they're, uh, Barbara St. Andre did a, did a three unit 40B. All right. Um, could it be that if the, if we put into the appropriate location in the, in the, uh, the authority of this board to grant relief from the two year period? Take it away from Bob and give it to us? Yeah. Make it a special. Well, I don't. Make, make I don't have. I don't have the ability to grant relief. Can't grant from relief, that. but it. Yeah. But this would give him the authority to not. There would be no limit. If instead we make a special permit to grant relief, and puts it in our hands. I. I I'd be more in favor of that. That way. That way, we still. We're still basically encouraging the. Um, the two-year moratorium and uh, the two-year action on the part of the. Owner. Right, because that's in, that's by ins, that's by right. After that, it's not by, by right. right. Could you incentivize it that after three years you're required to have a special permit and it becomes more onerous? I think that's a reasonable thought. Because I think uh, the one situation that I'm concerned about, which I think is pretty frequent, is going to become more frequent, mm -hmm. is probates. Mm -hmm. um, certain families own property out here. Somebody dies, and you have up to three years to probate in the state. So they could go up to you know two years, three hundred and sixty-four days, probate the estate. One day later, they lose this right. Well, yeah, and there but, might but be and they, there might be a litigious can, reason for can, waiting. They can apply for a building permit at any time and then just extend it. I mean, it's not it's not as though there is no alternative. There is the alternative of yeah. applying. But what if there's but the no, difficulty the there? Estate, what if there's there, a Brian, is now that you're doing a determination of heirs? You know. Yeah, you may not. You, you may who, not have an owner. Apply. Right. You know. You don't I, have an applicant for. And a I mean, permit. right. Right. Could that which, be, is, which is valid. Which is valid in the in a probate situation. We have kids fighting. Right. Yes. You have. Who's going to apply? You right. have incapacity. You have the Great Recession. Right. Uh, I mean, a lot of there reasons. There are all reasons where we would almost undoubtedly say, "Hell, the, the bylaw provides for our ability to grant a." special permit or to find that this should be way however we draft it and this is exactly the reason why we drafted it that way but I don't disagree that if if the board wanted to take the responsibility of um, ruling on you know cases like in, in this in this area and uh, Wanted to, wanted to do it through the special permit process after a particular time period had had elapsed. Um, that it's not a bad you. idea. Yeah. And I and I think the and I'd be in favor of going out further than three years and then making a special permit provision after that. Well, I think I expanding that. I'd leave period. it at two years and then. Well, except it's, it's two except years and eight ten Ed. Which right. is which is abandoned or not used? Right. So leave it at two uh, years. Eight thirty is actually three. Right. All right. So, so leave it at three. There's some conflict there. Without un, un, unless a special permit is granted, um, or a finding or a finding of the uh, zoning board of appeals um, to extend the period. It doesn't even have to be a special permit. Just a finding to extend the period. That seems to make sense to me, and <clears throat> if we do it that way, do we still need the division between residential and commercial? Because as a for instance, probably not. Say a beloved commercial establishment exists in situate and it's destroyed by fire on a non-conforming lot. 
and there's a credit crisis or another right. trouble with real estate in a commercial zone that and doesn't they have they separate systems get, <laughs> or there's a cleanup <laughs> dad's, uh, dad's next next store next right. to Sand next Hills. to a gas station that, and, yeah, uh, <laughs> and it has trouble figuring out what they're going to do in terms of <coughs> septic or sewer right. and they miss the deadline if we're already set up to issue special permits due to those types of delays is it necessary to close the door entirely on commercial or well, can it be left to this board to say no we're going to look at the situation for that property whether it's we're going to look at Yep. We're going to weigh the pros yep. and cons, and we're going to come to a decision. You know, I, cer I certainly would have I'd, – I'd have no problem with that. In the, the added benefit of that, it's at a public hearing. Yep. Versus I see some land use attorneys nodding their head because they just like the opportunity to make the argument. Well, the other argument, though, is – As they should. Look. I think so, also – I think 810 and 830 should be in line the same number of years. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. What about the appeal? I, I – I'm not sure I think that they shouldn't be, but, but I you, see the difference in one is you've abandoned something. You, you, there, a decision has been made to discontinue a nonconforming use or the use of a nonconforming structure. The other one, it wasn't a decision, right? It was that decision well, was made the, for you. Yeah. So, for example, there was a gas station in Greenbush when I was a kid. It was a, a Getty gas station. And let's just say that yes. gas station had a fire if they don't rebuild in two years they're out of luck well fire under it would be the three four rule now under 830 right right but if they decided to okay. shut down yeah, business that, that would, for that a little would be while actually, yeah, yeah okay right. yeah it would be so to a certain extent yeah. i can understand the that we're just going to shut it down EPA we're not going to renovate this house and try to resell it we're just going to walk away and if it was a fire and it's not someone's fault and they need to get their affairs in order to fix it, maybe they should have a little bit more time than opposed to maybe we want to incentivize a business or a builder to not just abandon a project and leave it unoccupied or unused or abandoned for that long. Well, in theory, anyone come, can come before the board looking for relief from any bylaw. That's right. Um, I'm only suggesting that by putting into the bylaw a specific <coughs> course of action, it makes it streamlines it so that there isn't a um, a concern. I guess my worry or my concern is how do the courts look at appeal at an appeal of our decision? If it's if they're asking if someone's asking for relief of the existing bylaw and we say no because that it's that's the bylaw. Um, Whereas if we have that wiggle room of at the opinion of the board, does the court then more readily overturn us? Overturn us if we what? If we deny it. If we enforce the, the two-year or three-year by saying, you, you know, you really haven't given us any legitimate reasons why you haven't moved forward on this. You've, you've owned the property. There, uh, you know, there's no extenuating circumstances. Um, I would say that, that that risk exists already, well, even if we yeah. don't change the bylaw. All right. that, I'm, yeah, I mean, again, I'm looking for an opinion on that. I yeah. see the risk at this point of, of uh, the town <coughs> being accused, so to speak, of, uh, of taking value from property uh, without compensation. In my, but, but it's not arbitrary. No, in, and in my action, I'm always looking to uh, if the property owner has uh, the means to go forward and make the property better than it is. I'm going to go buy the, you know, go with the property owner. So hopefully future boards would feel the same way. Well, Bob, I hope we've helped. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you have, I, th I, I think. I mean, if, if there's a consensus that simply inserting the, the provision of after the time period expires of coming before the board uh, and, you know, a reasonable decision being made by the board as to whether or not to allow you to rebuild or or uh, use the property uh, over again uh, I think that's it's certainly an easy change you just insert well, that into except the by existing, special permit by the zoning board of appeals you just insert start that. it with that right. and then say I think to your point you should say 
there should be something contained in this section as to what we're considering. Yeah, no, there should be special permit criteria. Yeah. Yeah, or or something along the lines of shall not be unreasonably withheld. I mean, that's Those pretty, special that's permit criteria wording, already but meet it. It is used. Uh, I'm not sure it does. No, when, when not substantially detrimental, etc. Of supply, you know, all of that kicks in. But that's that the changes or that the increase in the nonconformity is not substantially more detrimental yeah. in the in the. The well, this is a tough because the bylaw already says that you're rebuilding it in the same form that it was. Uh, the bylaw that it's that's written now says you got to be less non-conforming when you rebuild. Well, I would propose to change that to, to be uh, not more non-conforming, which is different. It is right. Right. Agreed. Yeah. So you could build in the same envelope. But you could you could build on the same foundation, for example, if that's all. Might be able to go up, but you could go up. Yeah. Yeah. But if you added more than twenty percent, you'd be back under um, section six, section uh, eight, eight, ten. Eight, ten. Eight, ten yeah. yeah. I guess along the lines of what you were saying, it becomes a hard decision to defend or say why you're making it right. at one hearing and why you're not another. If the if the bylaw says four, and Arguably, we're here to interpret the bylaw or apply it to certain situations. And the bylaw says it's got to be done within four years. And someone comes to us for a special permit because it's taking them six years. I guess that criteria needs to be uh, upon the board finding that sufficient reasoning was given before the delay which basically will need to be something more than the we just didn't get around to it until now, right? Well, we couldn't get a loan. Timmy and Susie were fighting over who got 51%. Or, you know, the woman who owned it was incapacitated. And mm -hmm. What do some of the other towns do? Not to steal their bylaws, but just to get, a, not? get a sense. Uh, that's a good question, Tom, and I can't really answer it here. I've got some information from Hingham, and Hingham probably doesn't let you uh, I've, I've, I've got a, I, I would have to kind of gel that together. I mean, I can look at it up. I can look it up too. I just yeah, don't know. If I you think know there's something on the books in Hingham. <clears throat> I think there's something in Hull and something in mm -hmm. Cohasset that I've been told about. Okay. So I don't. I didn't drag those out. Um, you're going to advisory on this tonight? No, no, I'm okay, going on um, the departmental budget. Okay, that's easier for, <laughs> in terms of the effect. Yeah, I mean, the other, um, the other thing that we may want to think about is if this is a, a problem that can't, you know, be solved to, to everyone's satisfaction in the next few weeks, then maybe it's before next year's town meeting. I mean, there's certainly no gun to the head situation here. April? Was it April? Yeah, but we, we've got public hearings coming up, and there's a, it's gonna go on the agenda. There's a schedule working You need to forward. go on the agenda before our next meeting? Um, the planning board, right? Yeah, I mean, it's already on the agenda as a placeholder. Okay. So, um... um I'd be happy to, within the week, get you a stab at uh, adding a, unless a special permit is sought and given due to our consideration of reasoning for providing an extension. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, or you can take a stab at it. That's not a terribly comp, comp it's less complex than what exactly, you've exactly. succeeded at doing here. You, so. You really probably only need to insert that clause in the existing it's bylaw. A second paragraph, right. right? Yeah. By the way, Bob, what you've done here, I knowing what you want to accomplish is great. I mean, you've really done a marvelous job with. Uh, um, and yeah, drafting don't it. don't sell yourself you. short on yeah. how you've drafted it. Yeah, yeah, it's excellent, Bob. But I think, yeah, I think maybe, especially if you agree, I think. Uh, I think I would make a motion that the board ask the building commissioner to attempt to utilize the current section with the addition of a provision that allows 
the board to grant a special permit for an extension of the time frames already included in 830. Do we even need a motion? It's just it's on the agenda. It's just discuss matrix of proposed changes. I don't think so. But then I, I think it's a bad idea. To I think because then you can say the board made a motion and this is the yep. paragraph that they are. If the board that reviewed they supported. it. The, the board. We will second the motion. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. I mean that simplifies the the uh, the issue, and I think it. Uh, largely does what, I, what I'm hoping to be able to do. Sure. Thank you. Which is to give people who are aggrieved by this um, some hope of relief uh, at some point. When, whenever we can help simplify the zoning code, I think we're... Uh, we help the that's, hopeless. That's above average <laughs> for us. It's above average, yeah. exactly. Um, <coughs> well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Bob. Thank Thanks, Bob. Bob. That's all right. Thank Have you. fun at AdCom. Uh, yes. And um, then... Um, just quickly, George, so the way that we work the alternates versus the voting members is everyone votes and the, the vote doesn't typically count to your point right. in question before, it gets but it gets recorded. We, we do it as a matter of process and then also in the event someone's vote was disqualified or whatnot, that it that is there answer. waiting right. in the wings. Okay. Gotcha. Um, with that, we are going to move on to our second application on the agenda of Benjamin Bornstein and Zarla Luden of 99 First Parish Road in Situate requesting a special permit or finding pursuant to Chapter 48, Section 6 and or Section 810.3 of the Situate Zoning Bylaw to repair and add a second story to a pre-existing non-conforming structure on a pre-existing non-conforming lot on property located at 99 First Parish Road in Situate. Hi there. Hey. Pre-existing non conforming street. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what you have planned? Sure, so we're, we're seeking a zoning relief for sec Section 6 finding, um, basically to uh, repair. Uh, Sorry, I you, Brian's correct. Before you get started, just for the record, just uh, your name. Ben Bornstein, 99 First Parish Road. And, and I'm Zyla Ludi, 99 First Parish Road. Thank you. Um, Sorry, um, it's my fault. And uh, so we're seeking uh, section six finding to repair uh, and add a partial second story to a non-conforming accessory use structure at the rear of the property. Um, I think you already read that from the hearing announcement, but um, basically this building um, has had a long history as an accessory use. I think believe it was, it was constructed obviously pre pre zoning act. And, um, Do you know the, when it was constructed? Uh, the assessor's records say 1962. But um, I'm not. <coughs> that's that's all we have to go on. We don't have anything, mm -hmm. any sort of plans or anything recorded that would indicate the actual date. Um, the building conforms to to the setback requirements, except for um, on the west side of the building. There's a, a greenhouse off the side that is uh, 3.2 feet at its minimum point. Um, where in our zoning R3, it's an eight foot side yard setback. Um, and then part of the wall structure itself um, is non-conforming also to the setback um, and has a variable setback from eight and a half feet to 7.4 feet. Uh, it's not totally square to the property line, so it's a little bit variable. Um, I think uh, as part of the project, we would propose to remove the uh, greenhouse and also a raised mm -hmm. kind of planter that's built onto the building it's a it's a masonry wall um, permanent structure and we'd be removing those and we would basically be bringing the building into conformance with the side yard setback except for the um, southwest corner of the building wall which would remain at the 7.4 foot setback um, other than that it's a fairly straightforward project we're just trying to kind of finish everything and make it a space that we can use for home office and studio uh, as well as a small garage and then the adding the additional <coughs> over 20 percent increase of the small second story would enable us to have the space that we need um, so I would entertain any questions from the board all right it appears to be a, a flat roofed building is that correct mm -hmm. that is correct mm -hmm. yeah the building is um 
So it was originally constructed, to our knowledge, as actually a welder's garage and like auto mechanic shop. So it that's has, what it looks like. Yeah, yeah so it yeah. has a like kind of an interesting. And at some point, obviously, like there was a brick facade added, and some people did some put some like some windows in and things like that. Um, but it's a it's a cinder block construction with steel beams, a flat rubber roof, and a concrete slab. And um, it were the our intent is during the renovations um, to kind of pay homage to the existing architecture and kind of give it a more kind of an industrial look, but a little bit more modern and a little bit more finished it, it, for a residential kind of uh, use. And it's going to be like personal use? Personal mm -hmm. use, yeah. We're yeah. both self-employed, so it would be uh, office space. Um, we would be retaining one, like the garage bay, that a, a major portion of that. Uh, there's already a garage there, right? Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Um, and then there would also be a, a room for kind of like home gym and um, like a music studio type space. I saw that. That'd be like personal, like if you guys wanted to play music yourselves, not. Yeah. Right. Our intent is not to have a recording studio, studio. or anything. Yeah. And, okay. and um, for our home, for our home use, uh, it would really be there wouldn't be people coming to the property or anything. Right. We both uh, would kind of be using it in a as consultants, I guess. Yeah. Um, I have a landscape design business, but my real operational part of my business is, is elsewhere, and this is more of a design studio where I can do my Retail. plans and things like that. Is there septic or um, water? There's an, existing, there's an existing water line from the house. Um, it's been capped off because there's no plumbing fixtures in the building. Um, there's a electrical service and a gas service, all pre-existing. There's a pipe. <laughs> That goes, I think, to a, a relic septic system somewhere. But since that has existed, the, t the house itself has been on town sewer. So we're exploring options to uh, tie into the town sewer um, up at the house connection if we're adding bathrooms. Brian, George? Yeah. Um, you're not gonna. Are are you going to change um, any of what looks like a driveway? Uh, nope. There won't. There won't be any changes to the driveway layout. Um, there will be no. I guess I shouldn't say there will be no addition of impervious service, but it would be very minor. It would be like maybe a landing for a doorway or something mm -hmm. like that. So there really will be no need to look into any stormwater or anything like that. And we'll be okay. very cognizant to make sure that's all managed in an appropriate manner. Just to clarify, this has nothing to do with the house, correct? No, it's nothing it's to do with the primary dwelling. This is 100% the accessory structure at the rear of the property. Yes, yep. that's correct. And there's no intent to um, to turn this into an accessory, excuse me, an accessory uh, dwelling. It's going to be purely, essentially, uh, professional office space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. for yourselves. Yeah, yeah, professional office space, but also like home use Family. that we, yeah. in a small yeah. house, we don't have room for a drum set or having a band practice yeah. or something right. like that. So, <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Even in a big house, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah. And he's a drummer, so we need to get him to another building. So. We need to get him, <laughs> out, of, uh, need him out of the house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Probably it's moving further back. Well, without, yeah. without an accessory dwelling permit. That wouldn't be an option anyway. Yeah, and that's um, just, just. But we're not. Are we flushing it out? And yeah, that was just that was Bob's in. real one note. Was uh, a, mainly a note in support of this, in that they are removing nonconformities, mm -hmm. and then he just cautioned that this could not be, as part of this application, at least to your point, it, this could not become a dwelling unit. But I, I correct, think the applicant understands. Yeah, that. and and if mm -hmm. if if that was something we would do. Owners would do the separate. Feature, we'll make sure we go through the the, the accessory dwelling permit application. And all, of that. all right. With that, anyone from the audience have any questions or comments on this application? No. Okay. With that, do we have a motion? Make a motion on the application of Benjamin and Zyla, uh, Benjamin Bornstein and Zyla Luden. 99 First Parish Road on their request for a special permit slash finding in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 48, Section 6, 
810.3 of the situate zoning bylaw. Uh, I find that the structure is pre existing, non conforming, <coughs> um, and that the addition as proposed in the plan prepared by Ross Engineering dated July 29, 2019, is not substantially more detrimental uh, to the neighborhood. And I approve it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you yeah, very much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Who's, uh, who's up? I'll do it. There we go. We're volunteering. volunteering. Yeah, we're, we're a generous bunch. <laughs> For our third application, we have Carrie Lynn Crawforst of 96 Turner Road in Situate requesting a special permit finding pursuant to 810.2 and or MGL Chapter 48, Section 6 to allow the extension of a pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling increasing the gross floor area by more than 20 percent the property being located at 96 turner road in situate welcome again uh, just your uh names for the record please for the record gregory morris registered engineer morris engineering with me is the property owner and applicant Terry lynn crawforst uh, as was just read into the record this is a request for a special permit to allow an addition <coughs> the home at 96 turner road uh, the property is located in the R3 zoning district. Um, referring you to the plan, the property line is shown in black, uh, approximately 50 feet wide on the road and the page. I've highlighted in brown the existing home, which is kind of centrally located on the lot. The home was built in 1925. Um, the lot and the structure are both non conforming with respect to several aspects. The lot area consists of 5,000 square feet, where 10,000 is the requirement. The lot width is 50 feet wide, where 100 feet is the requirement. The frontage is 50 feet, where 100 is the requirement. In the front yard setback exists at 28.5 feet, where 30 feet is the requirement for the front yard. The proposal here is to add a two-story addition. I've highlighted that in orange. The addition would uh, be off of the back of the house. Uh, it's relatively modest in size. It adds approximately 381 square feet, which would bring the house to a total of 1,492 square feet. It represents a 34.2% increase. The addition complies with all setbacks, the side setbacks as well as the rear setbacks. It does not create any new non-conformities. Uh, the applicant went around to several of the neighbors and got signed um, by seven of the abutters in the immediate vicinity, um, a letter of no opposition to the project. I'll turn that in for the record. Thank you. All right. The proposed addition is only out the back, entirely within the building envelope, and uh, no changes to the front or sides of the existing structure. Correct. All right. You're taking it easy on us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got nothing. No? I'll write it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but for the 20%, they've no reason to be here. But yep. <laughs> exactly the kind of relief that we are empowered to grant. Yeah. Quite, em quite empowered. Um, I don't think Bob had anything of note on this one. And um, with that, anyone from the audience have anything on this application? <coughs> no. All right. She's laughing back there. I've got to get that one of our expenses. <laughs> Um, we just need to find you, right? It's not a yeah. special permit. I think it is a fine. Yeah, move to find that the 
application of uh, Carolyn Crowforst, Crowforst. Crowforst. Um, of 96 Turner Road for the extension on a pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling. <coughs> Increasing the gross floor area by more than 20% is not substantially detrimental to the neighborhood and uh, granted. And, and as in compliance with the plan uh, by Morse Engineering uh, dated 12 10 19 entitled proposed edition 96 Turner Road second second all those in favor aye aye thank I'll you, thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you so much I'll do that one all right volunteering still, still in the Christmas spirit <laughs> cooking with gas well, I think I'm not going to be here on in February so I don't think I'm going to be here either uh oh maybe we have to change February really all right. It's a great vacation week. It's school vacation week. Yeah. I'll be on the slopes. I'll be on the slopes, tearing it up. <laughs> Figure eights. I think <laughs> I think I'm doing powder eights. Powder eights and eight. I think I'm doing home construction, but I prefer to be someplace else. All right. With that, our third application. I'm sorry, our fourth application. Is that of Brian O'Neill Sr. Esquire of 35 Gannett Road in Situate requesting a special permit finding under 48 Section 6 and or 810.2 of the zoning bylaw to raise and reconstruct a pre-existing non-conforming accessory structure increasing the gross floor area by more than 20 percent or property at 35 Gannett Road in Situate. Hi there. Again, your name for the record, please, and tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Sure. Uh, Brendan Sullivan from uh, Cabinet Art Consulting, uh, here representing the applicant and owner, um, Brian O'Neill, uh, for 35 Gannett Road. Um, the property is in an R3 district. Um, the lot is conforming, uh, and the main structure is conforming with all respects to zoning, um, except for the detached, uh, the detached garage in the uh, southwest corner. Uh, it's on the corner of Gannett Road and uh, Pond View Ave. Uh, so we have two fronts basically and two sides. Um, the structure was built approximately 1910. Um, it is in a flood zone AE elevation 16. Uh, we've been in front of conservation and got approval from them already. Um, so the structure right now is it's approximately 20.3 by 20.3. Uh, the homeowner would like to construct a 24 by 24 uh, garage increasing the square footage by about 164 square feet. Um, the two side yard dimensions are 1.6 and 5.5. Uh, we're going to maintain those um, side yard setbacks. It's a one-story garage. It's going to maintain a one-story garage. So there's no change to the setbacks. Is that no change correct? Proposed. No, no change proposed, except for there are a few more running feet heading out towards Gannett and Pond View yes. that will be yep. created within the setback. Right. Because the structure is going to be raised, I would propose that we ask the applicant to uh, pull the structure back so that it conforms with there's plenty of room so that it conforms with the uh, the setbacks turn it into a conforming structure well how is it is it's intended to be completely raised yes it's not trying to save anything no I mean I can I can I can see granting relief from the rear yard setback as it's a corner lot and not that large well, actually, it's a pretty good-sized lot, um, but the uh, but the side yard setbacks it, it seems a no-brainer to enforce them. The rear yard setback because it's a corner lot. Yeah, you've got that. Yeah, that radius. That radius. I mean, it, well, the it, radius only applies to a uh, primary structure, does it not? Well, any it, we can apply. It, um, 
It's eight feet. It's still eight feet. No, I, I, it's, it's I think it applies to any structure yeah, over it, 150 square feet, right? Right, and it's 20 feet. It would be a 20-foot rear yard setback across the whole rear yard line if there was such a thing. In this case, it's a, it's a small because it goes back to the corner. It's actually not even imposing a great deal on the space. I mean, we're, I believe we're, I'm reading on page 94 of your zoning bylaw. It says, with the exception of one-story accessory buildings, in the case of a corner lot, the rear yard depth shall be at least an arc 30 feet for R1 and R2 and 20 feet for R3. So it looks to me that accessory accessories buildings are exempt from that. But not from the side yard. I mean, not from the side and, and rear. My question on asking them to pull it back for an increase of, and remind me again how much bigger this is getting. What, it's basically, so it's four feet each side. It's basically 20 by 20. Right now, we want to put in a 24 by 24. So four feet on in each direction. So is, is adding that much size to it? along the same lines of the footprint more detrimental it wouldn't be if they were adding it but they're raising and reconstructing it there's already a driveway there right yes well right but they, they wouldn't have to be here to raise and reconstruct it in well I guess. so they wouldn't have to be here to raise and reconstruct it in exactly the same so so our, so our increase is 20 is 40 percent yes we could uh, we could not be here and get a building permit for a 24, uh, 20 by tw uh, 22 by 22 footprint. Right. We wouldn't have to be here at all. Right. I would agree. And so. What's the reason not to to bring it conforming to the side yard setbacks? You just want to put it on the same footprint that's been there since 1910 plus or minus. You got, you got to change that's the driveway. No, you, you don't. No, you don't. You don't. You don't. The, the you don't. It's going to be the same driveway. Everything's going to be virtually the same. It's just gonna it's gonna move forward a few feet and move to the side a few feet. Six and a half feet forward. So the driveway right, would have but to the, the driveway would have to be changed a bit. It, it's, I would the expect to come up here and come up here. That, yeah, that's I wouldn't be surprised the driveway is going to be reconfigured anyway because the structure is going to be larger, larger and yeah. you know. The, I don't know. I, I think it's an opportunity to eliminate a nonconformity or at least reduce, significantly reduce a nonconformity, especially, I mean, it's right up against that property line. It is up against that property line. And in terms of, you know, fire safety, it's better to have more access around the back of the, the building than less. So could I propose this? So the, especially the side yard with this has the 1.6. Um, setback. Um, could I set it back in a manner so that the area of the nonconformity remains the same? So move that back to where it is now. No, I would move it back. So, so if if we're, I mean, say that setback was two feet. So I have six feet times twenty feet um, of nonconformity. So that's one hundred and twenty square feet. Could I put one hundred and twenty square feet back in there with new structure? It would be less than eight feet, but it would be more than the 1.6, if you understand what I'm saying. I understand what you're saying, but I, I, I think you're, you haven't yet answered a, satisfactorily to my, for me, why not bring it conformant? There's, you're not putting it on an existing foundation. There isn't like you've got um, a, a foundation there that you're trying to use two, two right. walls of. Yeah. I mean, there's the new construction is going to s start fresh. If there was nothing there, you'd put it in complying, um, and to retain the the extraordinarily close uh, setbacks that are there now. I think it's. I, I'd like to know a compelling reason. Is there a, is there a ledge? Is there a tree? Is there a, it's is nothing. There, there's nothing. Yeah, it's but a it's a, it eats yard to to move it conforming. Well, that's right. That's it, the it, reason. It eats yeah. a little bit of yard, but it e even that amount of yard is is tiny, particularly in consideration of the way the house, the way the property is laid out. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about driveway. And it's it's a seventeen thousand square foot lot. It's not a small lot in a ten thousand square foot zone. 
Yeah, and, and unfortunately, I don't have a good reason why there is nothing. You know, it's not like we're saving trees or lead or anything like that. Right. Uh, I mean, and you don't right. want to put it in the same footprint. That's all. Right. But it's and it's on Gannett Road. It's on a, a you know, major road. It's it's a substantial home. Um, again, I I just. I'd like to have a compelling reason to grant the relief, and I don't think it's there. So, uh, and, and so just so I'm clear, it would be eight feet off of each line. It, the 20 foot setback would not apply to this. Oh, yeah, I, believe so he's, I believe he's right on that. Eight even eight even if it wasn't, I'd be willing yeah. to I'd be willing to grant yeah, that relief. Eight, eight feet off off both <clears throat> both lines. I'm, and and the rear, there'd be an eight foot arc from the back corner. I just I forget the, there forget is the still area. a rear setback. Yes, but it's Consider eight feet. Yeah. Cor correct. Yeah, I think on the corner for the, lot, no for rear, the it's just one size. story yeah. accessory. Yeah. And I'd grant relief from that. Yeah, it would be my feeling. Well, then, so we're just I'm just withdraw withdrawing then. We'll continue and just submit a revised plan. Yeah. Well, we don't so want to have to revise. If it's conforming, I don't need to be here. That's correct. Yeah. That's what I'm getting at. No, so, I think that. You yeah, do because the portions of the lot are uh, no. no he's, got, he's, got, he's got he's got frontage. If the if the setbacks are eight feet and eight feet and that's conforming, mm -hmm. then yeah. Well, the only other option is to go conforming or build a twenty-two by twenty-four. That's within the same footprint. Yeah, my suggestion is that you continue it to the next hearing and submit something to Bob, and if he gives you a permit, then you withdraw. Yeah, yeah. So that you don't have to. But if there, another issue comes up, you're still on the agenda. Okay, and I'll ask the homeowner if he has a compelling reason where to, right. why to sure. keep it where it is. Uh, move to continue the application. Well, before, you, before you do it, is, any, is there any public here oh, thank you. on this one? Anyone from the audience here on this application? And since we are saying what we're saying, especially, let's see what Bob says. Uh-oh. One more we want to hear from Bob. Oh, there we go. No increase in existing, unless you're in one story or higher. No. Either uh, to 20 feet. No. Okay, so sorry. So I move to uh, continue the hearing of uh, Brian T. O'Neill Senior Esquire, 35 Gannett Road, Situate, Mass, to the February hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks. All right. And our fifth application of Natalie A. O'Connell of 94 Lawson Road in Winchester, Massachusetts, requesting a special permit finding under 486 or 810.2 of the bylaw to allow the extension of a pre-existing non-conforming single family dwelling, increasing the gross floor area by more than 20% for the property located at 3111th Avenue in Situate. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, Jeff Delisi, I'm here tonight with uh, Paul Townsend, our client. <laughs> who is the builder uh, of the property, and, uh, and Greg Morse tonight from Morse Engineering. Uh, essentially, raise, this is a raise and reconstruct project. The house was built in 1928. The dwelling is located, or the, the property is located in R3, 10,000 square foot zoning district. The, the, uh, the lot's non-conforming, about 7,700 square feet, and about half the required frontage. The structure or the existing non-conforming uh, dwelling on the property is uh, pre-existing non-conforming with respect to uh, front yard setback and northeasterly side yard setback. The, uh, the concept here would be to uh, reconstruct the dwelling, which presently is a one and a half story dwelling. Um, we would still comply with height requirements, but we would make it a two and a half story dwelling. We would eliminate the front yard setback, which is 
actually calculated it as an average setback at about 16 feet and we would move it uh, to about 24 feet presently it's right around 16 as well and then um, off of the uh, right side yard or the northeasterly side yard we're eliminating that nonconformity as well I don't know which plan you have in front of you uh, Greg's chart shows uh, shows the proposed setback to be six feet but he was just measuring into the bulkhead which is allowed to extend into the setback area so the, uh, the the proposed dwelling would eliminate the front and the right setback nonconformity um, otherwise the, the structure will be fully dimensionally nonconforming additionally the property is in the uh, floodplain overlay I'm sorry dimensionally conforming, conforming. you meant. Yes. yes yes thank you of course Big distinction I appreciate it um, the otherwise the property is in the uh, floodplain overlay um, after the application was filed Greg Greg did a little more diligence and and, and determined that actually the structure the existing and the proposed structure would be outside of the um, of the floodplain even though it's basically it matches the FEMA flood line and so I, I don't think therefore we need a special permit but we're requesting it anyway um, and we would obviously have to meet the building code requirements but we're not in a special flood hazard zone so we don't need to elevate the house or anything to that effect so um, with that if you want Greg to present the plan or if you have any questions I'm happy to answer I think I'm pretty probably good on the presentation of the plan thank you anyone else Please. any questions anything else to add George no nope. no <coughs> and this is exactly the kind of thing we we're looking at we've got existing structure that's non-conforming in many ways the proposed new structure is going to bring the structure conforming, conforming and we can't conform the lot because you can't make a bigger piece of parcel right right <coughs> yeah okay anyone for the audience here on this application no okay with that we have a motion I move to grant the applicant's request for a special permit uh, pursuant to Citrus Zoning Bylaw Section 810.2 and under 40A Section 6 that the proposed raising and reconstructing of the dwelling at 3111th Ave will not be more substantially detrimental <coughs> to uh, persons and property in the neighborhood and uh, move to grant the requested floodplain special permit to the extent that it applies to this project second all those in favor aye aye, aye. thank you thank you very much appreciate it hey, can you, you draft, uh, uh, help us out with a decision there wonderful yeah i'll get one uh shortly actually Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> hmm? That's right. <laughs> it's much faster if they do it. <laughs> All right. When the builders in the audience, you know you're going to. Although I would, I'd look to do that. this. I'm going to look to try to get we my. Have we have our final application of the evening. Too much. <laughs> that Actually, of yeah. Lawson Green SLR Limited Partnership, That's care of the Grantham Group. Requesting a modification of the comprehensive permit for Lawson Green Apartments that the departure from, I believe that is supposed to say, lead certification in favor of Energy Star Energy Efficiency Design Standards does not constitute a substantial change from the requirements imposed by the comprehensive permit issued in February of 2018. Hooray. Good evening. Welcome Thanks. back. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me back. <laughs> so um, this this decision, this is really just actually a finding. Um, these are items that were identified by closing attorney. There's about six different attorneys on this transaction, and um, oh. one of them just wouldn't move forward without a finding by the ZBA that a switch from lead standard, lead building um, 
standards to Energy Star standards did not constitute an insubstantial threat, uh, change. Bob seemed to think that it wasn't a condition of the permit, but just to make everybody happy, I'm here tonight to kind of resolve that. And I've actually brought a decision with all the findings I could pass to you. Okay, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Permission to approach, absolutely. <laughs> Especially when you come bearing a decision. <laughs> this would be like the original that I would need to file with the town clerk. Thank you. Morning. Leave that up there. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, yeah. uh, we to close this next Tuesday. So, uh, so, uh, so to, to that end, so I'll throw my two cents in as well. I remember this application. I, I, am, I don't remember whether... I feel like maybe I do remember that lead was mentioned. But I also remember that it was not something that we relied on in our granting of the application. Um, I think maybe if right. you could just very quickly we'll give us a little bit about why the change. Okay, so I the, the lead uh, building efficiency standards were promulgated by the U.S. Uh, Sustainable Building Council. Uh, it it kind of came out of the late 90s. They're about building high performance, um, high performance buildings. That doesn't necessarily mean high efficiency buildings. They're actually, it's over the years, the sort of go, uh, goalposts have changed with regard to the standards. So that it sort of becomes a little bit more of a beauty contest. So for example, a LEED certified building needs to change, a room needs to change its air every uh, 30 times in an hour, whereas the code or energy star is you know, 15 times an hour, for example. What, uh, what happened between when we filed our application with the state and right now is the LEED standards changed in April of 2019 and they all of a sudden created a new uh, sound attenuation standard, which has nothing to do with energy efficiency. It just has to, you know, deal with the fact that, you know, sound traveling between units. So what that what that would have required in practical terms is that we install two sheets of uh, five eighths sheetrock between each unit. So we thereby doubling the amount of sheetrock we would be using in the project in order to meet this new sound attenuation standard, which does nothing for energy performance uh, or efficiency or green building concepts. It's merely an additional cost that we couldn't bear. The cost of the project was about almost a quarter of, a, or almost a, a half a million dollars that we had not budgeted for. So we had to, mm -hmm. uh, we had to leave this, uh, the standard behind. It just couldn't, we couldn't con conform to it. What we have done instead is gone to the Energy Star uh, standard and building to that is actually going to deliver us a higher um, a higher performing building from an energy consumption perspective because you're not you know when you're heating and cooling and you're changing the air in a room 30 times in an hour versus changing it 10 times in an hour your heat's going out in this winter and your cool air is going out in the summer you know so you're changing the air so that your consumption goes up so <clears throat> Interestingly enough, I learned this along the way that Energy Star is better than LEED when it comes to sustainability. So that's basically in green principles. That's the the basis for why we're seeking this change. There's also um, one other item that I just wanted to roll through with you on. This just fine. These are just generalized findings that the board would make that the, the building plans and site plans are acceptable um, as submitted. They've been submitted to the building department for approval, and I believe we're one sign off away from the uh, DPW from getting um, a building permit and that there's no oh there's also a uh, an acknowledgement of the, f the fact that the town has assigned an official address to the property changing the ad address from zero Central Park Drive to two Central Park Drive just an acknowledgement that that's an insubstantial change um, and that um, right that's and that there's no need to subsequently approve any easements created under the comprehensive permit. This is just something that was in the comp permit that we there we haven't created any easements on the property. So rem remind me what was in the comprehensive permit so regarding easements? It was just the, saying that we had to come to you to approve any easements. The only easements on the property that we are not actually on the subject property. They are on the adjacent property in the existing parking lot which is part of the site plan. So what we were trying to do by asking for that the board um, 
except that they don't need to exercise any authority over any future easements. If we go outside of, if we have to execute a new utility easement and change something, if there's a giant rock that we find when we're digging and we have to then, you know, turn the easement over here, we don't want to have to come back to the board to request that change because it'll be with the landlord, which is the housing authority, to change the easement. Right. It's a utility. It's basically just concerns utilities. Any easement to be created under the applicant's comprehensive permit. I, I'm just not following that. All right. Is that just me? What easements were we creating we under the comprehensive permit? It was comment. just a reservation of authority uh, to, to approve yeah. under the comp permit yeah. in, the, in the board. So prior to them entering into any easements, they'd have to propose the easement to us to be, because I think subsequently it'd be, have to be put on the plan. Yeah. Right? Plan would have to be revised. Right. Right, but at this point in time, you the changes, would, would it matter, there weren't any easements on it. We didn't, we didn't put any easements on it. There's that's, no. That's correct. But by, the, by virtue of the fact that this project is being built under that comp permit, the fact that there is, a, under our ground lease with the housing authority, there is an easement in that ground lease. It's not a recorded easement, it's in the ground lease itself. We theoretically, if we change from those, we'd have to come back to you to ask for your permission to modify those. And we're, that's all I'm trying to do by account is is trying to eliminate that. It was flagged by another. Yeah, the, and and I, I'm not questioning because I have any issue necessarily with what you're saying, uh, but I am a little. I'm wondering about. Great. I, I have no reservations that the fluctuations in the address that's assigned or the change from lead to Energy Star is an insubstantial change. Modifying a specific condition, eliminating what sounds like it was a specific condition in the already approved comprehensive permit, especially doing so when oh, that's okay. not really what was listed in the hearing, it feels like maybe that should be two separate things at the very least. And it doesn't sound like you're modifying any easements now. So maybe if and when you were, or maybe if we were going to change this to that, that condition that was contained in the comprehensive permit, the board acknowledges that that shall not apply to utility so, easements. That makes sense to me, but just insubstantial change in two, insubstantial change in four, throwing in a complete del deletion of a condition that was in the comp permit, Mm, in three, sort of jumps out at me. Well, I'm not even sure I have a problem it, with it. It just jumps I, out at yeah, me a little I, bit. I, I, the utility stuff, I'm not as worried about. But, me either. But what if? I mean, and I'm not saying they're going to do this, but you know, what if they grant some big easement to go over the property to access other yeah. stuff, and yeah, now yeah, we have totally. an oversight over? I, I you think, know, I'm just thinking. Okay. Yeah, I'm exactly. not even sure I have a problem with that. It just feels like we're, we're doing. It, it's an yeah, overly little things, and then maybe one. Oh, it's a know, potentially I, overly broad I, statement. I yeah, and I think because. Because of your training and your background, I think you guys are reading way too much into this. I think you're you're looking at kind of a nuclear scenario with what is a benign sentence. Yeah, I don't. Very I don't. Well maybe I yeah. don't disagree with you saying, "Hey, wait a second, let's just put on the brakes here." But at the end of the day, you look at look at the land that surrounds this. Parcel. Sure. What easements could or would be granted by the applicant that would somehow impact this 40B? That uh, wouldn't I, all. To be to be honest, I'm not even sure the applicant has the right to grant any easements. Yeah, because it's other than easements the for the purposes it, of constructing yeah. this development right. in, 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 in a utility so, easement. So I, I just I from my point of view I and I again I appreciate your perspective and I don't disagree yeah. with you saying wait 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 a second but at the end of the day I just I think I, I, I can tell you where this came out of it came out of the fact that we're extending a um, uh, a sidewalk from the live from the town-owned parcel next door across and one of the, the investor attorney wants me to execute a use agreement and an easement across for that and I said we're not going to do an easement we could do a use agreement to say that the public could come across that use that sidewalk it it, it was overkill but sure. it was just I was asked to 
presented to say that there's no additional requests from the board to could we could we then say pedestrian or utility easements and leave it at that sure would that make sense yeah. well i mean yeah that's that's will fine that, will I that mean, take care of your let me think i mean Yeah, I mean, I guess the only thing is that if I did subsequently have to modify the access easement, the vehicular access easement on the housing authority property, that the parking lot essentially next door, then I'd have to come to you and ask for. Yeah, and, and which relief? Think, which relief would subsequently be granted? Yeah, right? but I okay. I tend to think us in the future saying that any changes sure. to your access now is in. I'm, I'm not sure we necessarily want to change that. It yeah. probably would be, but you probably got to come well, back. For I, that. I guess my thought was that this is sort of within the four corners of the existing comp permit because the comp permit says a building a 30 unit building. You know what I mean? It's not. Yeah, but it's the layout. And, I, and right. I, I'm, I'm not saying I would have a problem with any possible changes, yeah. but somebody might. Yes. And somebody might have the feeling that you do need to come back. Okay. I can. That's why we. We have to be careful you know, we've with got that an sort obligation of stuff. to do our job. Yeah, you know, and, and, that's and really where I'm coming our from. Responsibility. I agree with you that anything I could possibly imagine falling under this, you're going to come back, and I'm probably going to vote that it's not a substantial change. That doesn't mean I think you shouldn't have to come back. Okay, that, I can live with that. Um, just sort of want to discuss pedestrian or utility easements adding to number three. That that's that, I'm totally fine with that. With that. Um, do it on the original on the this copy just. I don't know if you have this copy. Um, uh, you have your. Just write it in the one that we're going to sign, so you can have it tonight. Sure. Well, so the, the, what I was I was to talk to Bob about was to get this. May if it, assuming that the board is supportive of this finding tonight, to have it signed, and then I can get it to the uh, town clerk tomorrow morning, and I can go record it. So. Sure. Yeah. To the permit. It's this is just sort of. From our perspective, house uh, housekeeping matter. There you go. It's the closing. If you, if you initial it, or one of us initials it, is that sufficient? Yeah, you did it and, then, and there. There you go. Anyone from the audience here on this application? No. With that, I'll go ahead and make a motion that with the addition of the words pedestrian or utility to the finding and decision statements in the proposed decision regarding changes or approval of easements, that the board vote to find that the three proposed provisions regarding Changes to easements, the address, and the change from LEED certification to Energy Star certification are not substantial. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. And do you have to initially uh, change the. Do we have any minutes? Yeah. Yes, you mm -hmm. did. What month was that? That was September. September? I was they were fine awesome. with those. Yeah. Move to accept the minutes as submitted. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do you want to all initial that? I sure. What do you think? I think this is probably fine. <laughs> I think oh, this yeah, this is for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So it is. We go to the town for I'll take his oh, Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. And I'll be around. Um, yeah, that's probably safe. Yeah. That we all understand. I mean, they can make a motion to adjourn. Yes, oh. we all we we do. We um. In the business. We don't have anything else. Yeah. With that, I have a motion to do it. Move to adjourn. Second. Black pen. Good God, what am I doing? All in favor. Aye. 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 There you go.